Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Chew on This. It's Michael here. I'm just dropping some info about this solo episode before we get into it. It's my first one in a while, so I was a little nervous. Uh, You could probably tell at some points in the video I stumble, or in the audio as well, I stumble over my words a little bit, but we got through it. We got there. It was a good time. Um, You know, and I expect to get better uh, at this with every attempt and every video, every podcast, um, every episode of this show. So, um, all feedback is very much so appreciated, uh, and we appreciate all the new subscribers coming to the channel, all the likes you guys have been dropping. Um, It means the world to me. It it really does. It's really cool seeing um, this small community hopefully grow and grow. Um, That's the dream. I would love to talk with you guys about films and everything under the sun. Um, But yeah, in this episode, talk about some movie stuff, obviously, my history with movies, why I got into YouTube, um, some of my interests outside of film and outside of YouTube as well, um, some of my inspirations, talk a little bit about, you know, some struggles over the last uh, year during quarantine and some stuff to expect from this channel now that we're out of that funk and we're uh, ready to get things going. So please, guys, let me know what you think of this episode down below and enjoy this episode. Chew on this. Thanks. What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Chew on This. I have to get used to saying episode instead of another video because um, we are on Spotify now, or we should be at least by the time this episode goes up. I don't know if all the episodes will be up uh, by the time this is up or vice versa. Um, I'm not sure which one is going up first, but they're both in the process of being uploaded and all the old episodes are in the process of being uploaded too. So expect those in audio form. So that's why we can't say video all the time for these episodes that you on this. But welcome back to another episode, guys. Um, first solo episode that you on this since like last summer, I want to say, or maybe two summers ago, which was just like a movie recap kind of thing. So that's a little different from <laughs> what today's episode is going to be. Um, this is so different. It's, it's going to be different because this isn't just about movies today. I'm kind of going to talk about myself a little bit, too. I kind of want to share a little bit about myself or you know, new subscribers that are going to be coming in in the future and for new viewers who have just started, uh, started watching when Chew on This came back. Welcome, first of all, Michael. Nice to meet you guys. I'm happy that you're here. Um, it's cool seeing like the subscriber count slowly go up. So keep on subscribing, guys, liking the videos, um, comment on them. It means a lot. I'm trying to get as much feedback as I can to fine tune the show to the best it can be um, for you guys, because I want to keep on getting cooler guests, you know, being able to talk about different things, not just film. I want to kind of interview um, beyond just that and do the show just beyond beyond just film. So um, everything helps, guys. And I appreciate all of you that have stuck with me through this process, through the many restarts and through the um, many iterations of Chew on This and this channel. Um, so we should kind of just start with going back to, um, I guess, why I made a YouTube and when I made a YouTube. Um, I don't think this is something that I've talked about on this channel yet. So it begins. This is the tale of Michael Chu. Um, back when I was in middle school, I want to say back in the eighth grade or seventh grade, um, a bunch of friends of mine, they were all gung ho about this YouTube game. They were like, oh, let's all do YouTube, you know, and silly me, you know, me too. I, I at the time, I had been a big fan of watching movie reviewers like Stuckman, Chris Stuckman, Jeremy Johns, um, the Schmoes, you know all those guys from back in the day that are still killing it now. Um, I still watch Stuckman and John's a lot. I don't really watch Schmo- the Schmoes uh, too much, but Stuckman is still the man. He's, he's obviously one of the reasons why I'm doing this and pretty much it, obviously too. Um, pretty much it was the reason I got into independent film and different types of film um, started from watching that channel. And the love for interviewing came from Jake's takes. I don't know how familiar you guys are with Jake Hamilton, but he would interview um, all sorts of celebrities, all sorts of actors, directors, you name it, he would do it. Um, And he just had the best attitude. Like he always had the most positive, um, vibrant energy. And we had like a brief little interaction on Twitter and he's just as kind um, even on there. Uh, So yeah, I mean, that kind of started moving the gears in my head, kind of like what I wanted to do with this channel. Obviously I'm so big into film, but my first video is actually, and I'll put it in this, um, I still have it somewhere. My first video is like a clip from a PS3 game, WWE 13, I think. And it's like a clip of like my creative character slamming Kofi Kingston through a table. Um, yeah. And I was like, okay, this is, I guess how I'm going to start. Um, it did not want to be a gaming channel. So I have no idea why I did that. I guess. Cause it was just like the easiest thing to do. I remember they had a built in function that you could just upload 
clips straight from the game and you could edit the clips in the game. So I was like, okay, yeah, this is easy enough. Um, and it was, and it was easy enough. And I was like, okay, now it's time to get the ball rolling. And I did like, you know, trailer reactions. I was like a 12, 13 year old. They did a lot of trailer reactions, a lot of really, really bad misinformed movie reviews where I had no idea what I was talking about. Um, a lot of which my opinions have either changed drastically or I've gone back and rewatched those movies that I used to say I loved. And they're just like guilty pleasures of mine now, which we're going to get into in a little bit, but yeah, that's kind of where the, the YouTube game began for me. But if we're talking about where like the love for film began, um, probably a couple years, only a couple years prior to that. I mean, obviously in my youth, I went to the theater a lot with my mother, God bless her soul. She always took me to the theater. She's the best. Um, we watched so many movies when I was growing up. And and back then, I mean, I loved the theater experience, I think, more than I loved the movies. Just like going to the movie theater, getting popcorn. If you know me, I love popcorn. I always have to eat popcorn if I'm at a theme park. If I am at the movie theater, popcorn's my jam. I gotta get popcorn or a Slurpee or something. But 100% of the time, popcorn with some combination of a drink. Hopefully water, because I'm trying to stay healthier. But yeah, Um So I always been going to the movies since I was young, but I think what the the big thing that started my love for film and wanting to learn more about film is this film right here, Fight Club, uh, David Fincher's Fight Club. It, I saw it on a on Bravo TV, which is a channel in the U.S. If you're watching in the U.S., it's a channel. Um, They had Real Housewives on there. That's probably one of the more popular programs. But every once in a while, they would show movies on there as well, and. I remember seeing like the TV edit version of Fight Club. It was like three hours because it's the TV edit. So it took forever, um, the commercials and all. And uh, a lot of it was censored, obviously, because it's a very rated R movie. But even then, I was so in love with the film. I was mind blown. I was like, I cannot believe that, like, these are what movies are beyond, like, you know, every once in a while, like the PG-13 action movies I would see or like, you know, just children's family movies that I saw primarily, you know, and I was much too young to see this film i don't i don't think that 10 year olds should go see fight club and go out of their way to go see fight club but that was what started the interest and it made me go okay well i like these two actors so i learned more about brad pitt's filmography learned more about Edward norton's filmography i like this director i want to know what a director does what a writer does you know and that's where it all kind of started and that kind of just spiraled into me watching movie reviews like i said um watching pretty much it and like i said they I watched their trailer reactions and they would do trailer reactions for movies that like had like less than 50,000 views on the trailer. You know what I mean? And they would come out and I would be like, Oh, I know what this movie is. Everyone's looking at me. Like, I have no idea what this random, you know, French movie is like upstream color, you know, things of that nature, like weird, weird, obscure indie titles that like a 13, 12 year old, like has no idea what they really are about or anything. And just you know. I'm watching these videos. I think they're cool. And I wanted to learn more. And I constantly wanted to learn more. And that's where the love of indie films began. And um, I think that's like in high school, like early high school, I was way big into indie films because of pretty much it. Um, like Short Term 12, uh, Fruitvale Station, movies we've talked about on the show before, obviously. Um, the Guest, you know, uh, so many good indie movies from like that 20... 20- 13 to like 2016 time period i mean even now obviously with the rise of a24 but that was really like everything just clicked like all at once for me to become like a big movie fan i guess and obviously i'm a big fan of you know blockbuster films as well i'm not just like an indie snob or a cinema snob in fact i'm trying to educate myself more with like foreign film animation and um, indie cinema now because i feel like i have so much to catch up on because i only know indie cinema or even like only a tad of like foreign cinema from that small window of time um till now so i have a lot of catching up to do but of course i mean during that time was kind of the rise of the mcu and of course i loved when those movies were coming out i loved them as well they were so fun um my favorite hero when i was watching those films and probably still now like when i look at the mcu still now is captain america steve rogers is the boy chris evans you know played the heck out of that character he was so cool um uh, <laughs> winter soldier civil war he had the best movies other than you know the first avenger is really cool i enjoyed that film but you know it's nothing compared to civil war or winter soldier i mean civil war is kind of almost an avengers movie in a way but it, it has the captain america namesake so i'm gonna call it what it is it's a captain america movie and that's for sure you know still one of my favorite superhero movies one of my favorite movies or you know maybe even my favorite movie in the mcu i'm 
really right now, like thinking about after watching WandaVision, doing like an entire like rewatch of all the stuff from the MCU, um, which is going to be fun because I haven't seen a lot of them like since they came out. So many of them like Thor 2, uh, Captain Marvel, I haven't seen since it came out. You know, I, I, I haven't really had a desire to. But now that I'm a little bit older, you know, I'm over the spectacle now that Endgame is come and gone. You know, it's time to kind of revisit these movies and see how they hold up without hype and without you know waiting for the next film to 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 continue these stories um and i'm sorry i know i'm kind of jumping around a lot but because it's solo episode i'm just going with the flow you know i'm kind of trying to get this around like 30 i shouldn't say 30 excuse me like 40 minutes to like an hour and a half somewhere within that range so i will jump around a lot um but i want to kind of touch on a little bit of everything i want to give you guys a little taste obviously i don't want to reveal my whole life <laughs> on here right now or talk about every movie that i love on here right now because there's videos that i want to make and there's you know things i want to keep private for the time being um that maybe you know as the channel grows i'll feel more comfortable to share but you know so excuse me for jumping around but also thank you for your patience thank you for watching and uh thank you for enjoying the plethora of topics <laughs> that we're going through um but speaking on the mcu I kind of want to talk about WandaVision. I did a um, stream. I hopped on a stream on Sabrina Ramirez, a former guest, lovely Sabrina Ramirez, her um, Patreon. We did a uh, discussion on WandaVision. And obviously you guys didn't get to see that unless you're a patron of Sabrina. So go do that. You should. So if you want to hear my thoughts, you should go do that. But um, I'll just share them here also, because if you guys are not going to do that, then I want you guys to know what I think about it kind of um, vaguely. I don't, I'm obviously not going to break down episode by episode. Um, because that's not what this episode is for but I'll tell you my brief thoughts um I really enjoyed it for the most part obviously I'm a huge X-Men fan so there are things about the show that let me down um for example you know obviously the portrayal of uh Ralph Boner aka Quicksilver Pietro fake Pietro whatever you want to call him um that sucked it hurt you know it did hurt uh obviously you know it's on us for making theories in our own heads and whatnot and i and i didn't i really was going with the vibe of the show i was just riding with it it just sucks that it like that was the reveal and that was it i hope we get to see you know quicksilver come back or the x-men come back in some in some way but it wasn't an x-men show and it never was supposed to be and i guess that's kind of the point of that reveal too you know this isn't what you think it is and that whole show is kind of just turning your expectations on your on its head and you know messing with reality you know and whatnot and wanda's killing it as always elizabeth olsen in that show is just phenomenal i mean her and paul bettany i mean i feel like paul bettany isn't really getting enough attention for his part that he played as well um i haven't really cared about vision too much up until this point i mean obviously it was sad infinity war when you know vision vision had to die twice that sucked um but you know, at the time, it still, it was more so like Wanda's grief. You know, I feel more bad for her because that's a character we've kind of gotten a little bit more development with compared to Vision. Um, but this show did like a good job of kind of fleshing them both out, making their relationship way more believable to me because that was something that kind of lacked in the films as well, especially because they're both background players. Um, and the whole sitcom aspect of it is so cool. I mean, the first, I think it was like five or six episodes were when they were fully like all in on the sitcom before it became like more you know, they showed the outside, maybe it was like three or four, actually, when they started to show like the outside and everything like that outside the hex. Um, and all the scenes outside the hex is kind of where the show doesn't really do anything for me. Um, and it also is the reason why I kind of want to go back and rewatch these movies because um, it's MCU dialogue just like doesn't do it for me anymore for whatever reason. Uh, a lot of it is just like head scratching sometimes and I'm very very and I don't like to use this word too often but cringy sometimes it is very cringy despite me loving like these characters and this world that they've set up for so much time it's like sometimes it just sucks <laughs> sometimes it just sucks a little bit um but that doesn't take away from the entire show obviously it doesn't take away from the performances Catherine Hahn I mean wow she was great also as uh Miss Harkness what a what a what a cool twist what a little what a little thing that everyone kind of called um, but no one really thought it was going to just happen like that. And then it just did. Um, I wasn't underwhelmed by it though. I know a lot of people were saying like by the finale, it was just like, well, they had kind of one episode building her up and that was it. Um, which to an extent is true. Does it take away from my enjoyment of the show? No, because it's WandaVision. I expect to see Agatha at some point again. I'd be shocked if we didn't. Uh, she's in Westview. Wanda's going to be in Doctor Strange. Who knows what madness will ensue there that she may have to, you know, 
go back and and require Agatha Harkness's help. So I don't discount it. Um, I don't think that's that's the end of that arc. I would at least hope not. Please don't be a forgotten thread Marvel um, with Harkness. Uh, that would suck. Uh, same with Miss um, Rambo. I mean, I, that's another thing where it's like they built her character so hard up for that finale. You know, they gave her powers and everything, and and still it was kind of underwhelming. Her her scenes in the finale were kind of underwhelming so yeah a couple nitpicks obviously hayward is another character that i don't really care for um stuff of that nature just you know basically like i said a lot of the stuff outside the hex i didn't dig um a lot of like the development after like the sitcom portion of the show ended i didn't really care for but um i did love the second to the last episode we got so much like backstory for wanda and it kind of gives you you know some perspective what's been happening in MCU that she's had powers like this whole time pre stone and all, you know, and, 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 you know, does that set up things for mutants who knows, but the possibilities now are kind of endless and I can't wait to see, you know, what the next step in the uh, Marvel timeline is. Obviously I think black widow is like the next or Falcon winter soldier comes out this week um, right after Zack Snyder's justice league. And after that, I think would be black widow, which comes out in may, I believe. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see where it's going. Who knows? Yeah, it's hard to predict anything. I don't really like to predict things at this point because they'll turn on its head anyway. And that's kind of the fun of watching it. Watching the show is just kind of experiencing it. So, you know, I got a little bit, I'm not going to lie. I did get a little bit ahead of myself when they showed um, Evan Peters, you know, at the door. I did get a little ahead of myself. I won't lie to you. I have Logan on my wall for a reason, people, you know, so it was a little devastating. But other than that, you know, I still really enjoyed the show. I gave it a three and a half on letterbox, um, which you should follow me on because um, I'm not a dude that does like good video reviews, at least not at this moment. And that's kind of jumping back into now, like my personal um, stuff. I'm not good at doing reviews. Like I realized that a while ago, um, I'm just not good at like sitting down and like being scripted and just saying like, you know, this is what I like. This is what I didn't like. I, I don't enjoy it too much. Um, I enjoy discussion. And that's kind of also why I do this show is so I can talk to people about movies rather than just, you know, talk to the screen about them. Obviously, I don't hate that. I can still do it here. Um, I guess because it just feels like more free. It doesn't feel like I need to get it in a certain time constraint. I think that's what the big problem is, is like fitting all my thoughts in like five, six minutes, you know, and, and I'm not great at that. I have a lot to say about movies. I love about movies. I hate. I have so much to say. So yeah, I, I need a little bit more time than five or six minutes. And that's why this show gives me the opportunity to do that, obviously, with guests. And maybe in the future, we'll do more without guests. Um, I'm not opposed to that idea. I kind of want to see how this one goes first. It's not too bad. I'm having fun at the moment. Um, you know, it's all good. It's all good. And we're, we're having a blast. Um, so now, like I said, touching back on me a little bit, some things, you know, I'll go into depth a little bit about myself. I'm a big foodie. I love food. Uh, maybe I'll throw some pictures on the screen right now food 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 i live in an area um, i live in california i live in los angeles um, near los angeles so we have food from every nation here um you name it we got it so i'm constantly eating i'm constantly trying to find like what are the new cool places you know in the area that i can try the new big thing that everywhere is putting out is hot chicken out in california uh, nashville hot chicken which i love that's been an addiction of mine lately i'm a big fry guy i'm a big pizza guy um I love sushi, you know, I feel like I just love everything. I could eat virtually anything. I'm not a big vegetable guy. I feel like that's what most people who say they can eat everything say, sadly. Um, <laughs> but I'm learning over the past year and a half, two years, I've been learning to eat a lot more vegetables. Good for you guys. Just do it. You have to. And eventually you'll like the taste or you won't mind it so much. And that's slowly happening here. So it's working. Just, you know, got to get used to it. Got to try them out. Um, I'm big into music. I have, I mean, I talked with a friend of the show, Kristen uh, Willoughby, about this, uh, like, last week, I think we were talking about, like, what kind of artists we like, and I run the gamut. I love, you know, Taylor Swift, Tam Impala, Kid Cudi, Kendrick Lamar, The Beatles, Fleetwood Mac, like, my range, I, I, I love so much, you know, my range is large, I, I am not really opposed to any kind of music, I know most people are like, you know, I don't like I like everything but rap or I like everything but country. And nah, man, I like everything. Just is, if it's good, it's good. It could be from the forties. It could be from yesterday. It don't matter. Um, but I guess some of my favorites would be Fleetwood Mac is one of my favorite bands. Uh, the killers. I love them. 
so so much my dream would be to see them live obviously um something I've been wanting to do for a long time. That'd be probably one of the first concerts I would go to. Um, Hosier, I love. Kanye, as crazy as he is, I love his music. Um, Kendrick Lamar, I got to see him in concert a couple years back. Love him, one of my favorite artists. Um, and John Bellion, dude. John Bellion is like more of like a, a low-key artist, but I saw him last year or two years ago before the pandemic, and he was great too. I love music, guys. Um, send me song recs too. Like literally leave them in the comments below. I like listening to anything. So if you think something's good, just shoot it my way. I'd love to listen to it. Connect with me on Twitter. Hit me with some song recommendations, guys. I can always use them. Always looking for new stuff. Um, I'm not super big into sports. I am a fan of the NBA. I'm a fan of the Lakers. I'm from Los Angeles. So it's kind of like in my blood at this point. Um, doing good these past two seasons because LeBron is just a tank. Who's going to fight him? Who's going to stop him? Obviously, you know, I'm sorry. Quick basketball talk. If you're not into basketball, I'm going to briefly, briefly, briefly touch on basketball. Um, it feels like we're returning to an era where, like, super teams are being built to beat LeBron. I mean, if you look at the Nets, they have four stars on their team now. They're probably going to take it all the way to the East uh, Conference Finals, at least. Um, probably go against the Heat or the Celtics, I would imagine. And then uh, – from that point, you know, go against the Lakers. I don't see really anyone in the, in the West stopping the Lakers at this point. So, yeah, that's dope. I mean, it's fun being a Laker fan and seeing us win, but there comes a point where it's just like, you know, competition's cool, competition's fun. So, hopefully, you know, last year's series with the Heat was awesome. They're another one of my favorite teams. I love Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson. That's a squad. Um, so, you know, that was a great series. I would love to see, obviously, the Nets go against them. That would be an insane, insane series. I mean, how cool would that be? So, you know, looking forward to, to more basketball in the future. Um, I'm a big UFC guy or mixed martial arts guy in general. But, I mean, primarily now I just watch UFC because Bellator and all that stuff ain't too great. Um, one FC isn't too great. Uh, yeah. Uh, some of my favorite fighters, I love Darren Till, Robert Whitaker, Bisping from, you know, a couple years back before he retired. Obviously, he's one of the GOATs. Um, Anderson Silva. You name them, you know, I love so many, so many of the, I guess, I guess more, you know, older guys at this point, um, obviously not Darren Till, Robert Whitaker, but Bisping, Silva, um, Jock Ray, you know, guys like that. Uh, and I love Steve Wonderboy Thompson. That dude's insane. He's throwing kicks, kicks there, kicks there, kicks everywhere. You know, he's crazy. Um, not a huge Connor guy anymore. Everyone loves Connor. I love his whiskey. It tastes delicious. Not a fan of his antics outside of the ring, as great of a fighter as he uh, has been in the past and, and currently probably still is. You know, he's had a couple losses, but he's probably still, you know, itching to give back in the ring, obviously. And, you know, he'll probably get a couple wins soon, uh, get back in the ring, up in the rankings. Uh, but Dustin Poirier, you know, killing the game. It's cool to see. It's cool to see people in general, any sport, any profession, just like genuinely, seemingly like good people, cool people do good so congrats Dustin Poirier keep doing being a dope dude keep keep winning it's always good to see um and that kind of brings me to like talking about this community um and like kind of how life has been over the past year and why I like came back so everything's tying in together it's gonna everything everything you know all these points come come together eventually so um last year was tough dude coronavirus time Oh, the beginning of it was super tough, super duper tough to do anything, to, to do school, to get motivation, to come back and do this. I had plans of coming back and doing this like the year before, like I stated out, you know, we're going to be doing chew on this, coming back. And I even reached out to different creators saying, you know, it's, we're coming back and all this stuff. And she never came to fruition because I couldn't get motivated. And, you know, I was in a bit of a slump, if I can be honest. Excuse me. I was in a bit of a slump. Uh, I'm not going to say I was depressed. I think that's a very serious word that should be used carefully. So I'm not going to say that, but it was rough. It was super rough. I know it was rough for, for many people out there and seeing, you know, the positive voices on the, on, in the film space, you know, um, there are so many out there there. They are sadly, you know, just shouted over by the toxicity a lot of the time, but there are so many cool, dope people um, in this film space and in this world. And that's something that I'm kind of like noticing is that, you know, as crazy as times are getting, you know, more and more kindness is also showing. It feels like a lot more people are willing to take a stand and say something and, you know, reach out to one another. And that's, you know, I think that's a blessing as, as hard as times are, 
there's blessings in it. You know, there's always a silver lining and that's how you got to look at life. And that's, you know, kind of changed the mindset over the course of last year and kind of wanted me to rebuild the show and start it over and, you know, bring cool people on the show and talk to co cool, genuinely nice people, um, spread message of, of kindness and positivity first. Um, and so far, you know, I, I have never had a bad guest. I would be completely honest with you guys if I had, and I probably, you know, would, <laughs> I would have to figure something out, I guess, if I had a bad guest, but it's never happened. Um, everyone that's been on the show is an absolute, you know, genuine, kind person from all interactions I've had with them. And every where I see them um, in terms of social media and, you know, what they're doing on their own channels and what they're creating is just so full of, you know, just good vibes. And, and that's just what I want to keep is just good vibes and good conversation. That's what I, like I said, that's what I enjoy about talking about movies. Like when you go to the movie theater with your friends, my favorite thing to do is when you're done with the movie, you know, go have a dinner with your friends and just, you know, talk about your thoughts. And it's always fun. You know, I'm not the type that if you disagree with my thought, you know, I know a lot of people hate Fight Club. I know probably people don't like Logan or whatever. I know a lot of people don't like Spectacular now. Um, I respect your thought. I respect your opinion completely. There's so many movies that are critically acclaimed that I don't love either. I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head that I don't love. Sheesh. Malcolm and Marie. I guess that's not super critically acclaimed, but I know a lot of people are like, you know, this is one of the best movies. Yeah, you know, it's a, and it's fine. Like, you can think that, and that's totally okay. I encourage you to find your favorite movies by exploring a film, by watching as many movies as you can. Um, and that, like, in turn broadens, like, your taste and gives you more perspective, too. And, you know, opinions change. Um, opinions are constantly changing. I mean, I'm just rewatching. Like I said, that's why I kind of want to rewatch movies is because your perception can change. And then that discussion is even an even more fun one, like whether that's internal or with, you know, film, film friends or, or just friends in general, you know, it's fun. The discussion is fun. As long as we keep it civil, we keep it positive. Um, we just come from a place of, you know, you have your opinion, I have mine, and we're coming to talk about it and to share with the intention to share, not to prove that one person is right over the other. And that's always kind of where discourse takes a turn for the worse and and you know not something that i enjoy in the slightest it's a, but it is always fun to talk you know about film in a positive way it's good so going back to talking about like divisive you know things things that that maybe not everyone loves and you know please respect my opinion some guilty pleasure stuff i'll share some you know i'm a big as you can see slasher fan um i'm a sucker for a good slasher movie or even a not so good one a just mediocre one dude i just watched prom night from like 2006 or 2007 whenever that movie came out it was awful terrible did i have so much fun watching it yes so much fun um like i said these are guilty pleasures so you know some people say don't waste your time watching these kind of movies sometimes they're just fun <laughs> sometimes they're just fun to watch um but for example a movie that i defended you know for a long time and i completely understand everyone's opinions on how they don't like it is the most recent halloween movie um, it is super silly. There are so many cheesy moments in it. Lines that are so funny, um, unintentional or not. I don't really know. Did I love the movie anyway? Yes. It was so awesome. <laughs> it was so much fun. It was just so much fun. It had some good scares in it. I laughed actually a lot watching it. Um, I think, you know, some, obviously a lot of good intentional laughs in there as well, but some unintentional ones that gave, gave me a good, uh, belly laugh but yeah that's one of my favorite ones from the past couple of years one that i really don't get you know entirely the full hatred behind obviously like i said there are things that i completely understand that are kind of cheesy about the movie that or some things that don't make sense completely understand does it take away from my enjoyment of the film not really just because i'm a sucker for these kind of movies i think i'm not saying it's the best movie ever i just like it um same thing with a lot of rom-coms i'm a big fan of rom-coms i love 50 first dates um, I love, you know, The Wedding Singer. I'm naming only Adam Sandler movies right now, so I gotta name something else. Another rom-com. Let me think of one. Uh, Crazy Stupid Love. Love and Other Drugs I just recently rewatched, and that's or, or just recently watched, and that's a good one. Um, yeah, so I'm a big rom-com. I'm a sucker for rom-coms. I'm a softie. I cry during a lot of movies, so if there's like an inspirational sports movie, something like Warrior, uh, something like Rocky or Creed, I'm a sucker for those kind of movies or even like Southpaw if you want to take it a little bit darker I love those kind of movies um just kind of like rising from the ashes like the phoenix um one that's not a guilty pleasure but when I say phoenix the immediate thing that comes to my head is obviously x-men love the x-men series something I definitely want to do like a whole either series on or like podcast series on on this channel is talking about the x-men films I love them 
Um, I even enjoyed Dark Phoenix. Say what you will about that movie. I enjoyed it still. Um, the, my least favorite X-Men film, though, I don't even know if you can call it an X-Men movie. It's probably New Mutants followed by Origins, to give you a gauge. And I, I obviously don't think either of those are good movies at all, but I do think that Origins can at least be watched in jest for fun. It's hilarious. It's so, it, it is, in terms of comedy, it's aged like a fine wine, and I think you should watch it in terms, and you know, if you want a good laugh, it's hilarious. If, if The scene in the kitchen, I'll put it in right now, boom. You're right in there. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh. Supper's on the table. Gold, comedy gold, and it and it forever will be. Poor Hugh Jackman had to do that before he could do Logan. You know, you had to walk before you could run sometimes <laughs> in in your career, and you know he did it. And Logan, whoo, what a great movie, five stars. But anyway, continuing on with some guilty pleasures, I'm a big sucker for action movies. Oof, I love, love, love action movies. I mean, obviously, some really good ones that aren't really guilty pleasures. Die Hard, The Raid, 1 and 2. Um, even You can even say, like, most of the Die Hard series, like, up till 5. I guess 5 is kind of a guilty pleasure just because it's so bad. Um, but not really because also it kind of hurts a little bit seeing that series fall. So I guess I wouldn't consider that one a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, but, like, movies like Takers, uh, Jumper, you know, <laughs> now I'm naming like a bunch of Hayden Christensen movies. Oh my goodness. Uh, let me think. Fast and Furious, you know, that whole series, huge guilty pleasure series of mine. Um, the OG Spider-Man films. They, I mean, obviously people think they're still the best movies. I love them still. I still hold them near and dear. The second one is like still a phenomenal film, but obviously one and three are a little on the campy side. And those are some guilty pleasures of mine too. Not so guilty though. Maybe, you know, I'd be a little guilt-free about Spider-Man one, but Spider-Man three, got some guilt there got some guilt for venom too i didn't hate that movie so you know i like to have fun <laughs> i like to have fun when i watch a movie so if the movie's bad and it gives me a lot of laughs and a lot of entertainment then i kind of you know i'll be a little less hard on it but if a movie's bad and it's boring oof that's when uh that's when i draw the line and we're, we're not cool anymore so don't like boring bad movies boring fun movies boring entertaining or bad fun movies bad entertaining movies love them and i think there's also a benefit to just watching everything like a little bit of everything because it kind of like i said earlier broadens your film scope your film horizon you know what makes a good movie good and you know what makes a bad movie bad versus you know just watching a bunch of good movies it kind of gets hard to differentiate you know what 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 makes each one good especially when we come to talking about like superhero films for, for example you have to watch some some stinkers to understand what makes a good one um briefly touch on it because i do think i'm gonna end up doing actually i will probably do a review it probably won't be like a normal video review like i talked about earlier i don't like doing those it'll probably be like a video essay or something like that about Zack snyder's justice league Ooh wee what a hot topic um one that i've been horrified to talk about because it just feels like there's a war <laughs> it feels like there's an actual war going on on the internet about like whether or not you should like this movie i don't know why i don't get it I never will on both sides. I, I don't understand. And, you know, if you love Zack Snyder, go for it. If you hate on him and you bully him and you bully like people that love him online, please don't. Cause that's kind of, you know, it's not cool. He's had a hard time, obviously trying to get this film made, but also people that are like defending Zack Snyder, don't go out of your way to like trash on someone for not liking Man of Steel or Batman vs Superman. Cause that's totally fine if they don't, you know, as well. Um, but those are two movies that I do actually like uh, Man of Steel. I've always loved always 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 since the first time i watched it i thought that it was phenomenal um it's aged like a fine wine i still love that movie it's probably in my top three or top five superhero films of all time uh batman vs superman i have a little bit of a different history with um in the very beginning of it i watched it in theaters like everybody else and i went oof this is not good i don't think this is very good or at least it wasn't for me at the time um now obviously i still loved I, I even at the time though i still loved henry cavill superman still loved ben affleck as batman and still love gail godot as um wonder woman down prince um all three of those actors i feel like are just so perfect for those characters and now i can't unsee them and and and, and seeing like tyler um Hoshlin, I don't know how you pronounce the last name, but he's he seems great as Superman too. So it's cool seeing like new portrayals, obviously, but I have grown a fondness for these characters, even through my dislike of Batman versus Superman initially. But in rewatching it over these past like two years, I've seen it like three or four times over these past two years now. 
boy, I love that movie so, so much. It's not as strong as Man of Steel for me because I think there are a lot of problems with it still. <clears throat> More so in like the pace of the movie rather than like the actual content of the movie. I don't mind, um, especially the Ultimate Edition. I think it adds so much. It is a little bit slower, obviously, but it's like all crucial, crucial and to understanding like the story of the film it, it's crazy that they even released that original cut into theaters because it's like half the story is missing <laughs> it's it's insane and even rewatching it before rewatching the ultimate edition it's like i still enjoy it but it's definitely not as strong nowhere near as close and i, I couldn't say that i like fully love it you know what i mean without that ultimate edition because it just changes so much in that movie and really brings it to that next level it gives you know more motivation to superman for why he's you know got beef with batman gives us more of like a little bit you know damage a little it shows a little more damage to bruce wayne to ben affleck's batman too which i appreciate you know fleshing out that character a bit as well you got some cool lines about the wayne family history that i really dig um and you know it's a, it's a dope movie so in terms of my thoughts or like upcoming predictions on Zack Snyder's justice league um I'm excited for it. I'm so, 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 so excited for it. I've been wanting to see this vision completely realized. Um, if it sucks, it sucks. So be it. I just need to see it at this point. Um, yeah, and it sucks what happened. Obviously, that whole situation is just, just terrible. Um, my thoughts go out to his family, obviously, and to, and to him. Um, and it sucks what Joss Whedon did with that movie because it was terrible. Um, his version of Justice League is like laughably bad. Uh, I'll throw in, you know, Thin Lip right here, Mr. Thin Lip. Um, obviously, that's just like the tip of the iceberg of problems of that movie. But yeah, the less said about Joss Whedon, the better. <laughs> Not a fan of his at all. So very excited to see Zack Snyder's Justice League. Will it be good? I have no idea. I just want to see it. So, you know, I know people were kind of asking me about that recently. A few, my very, very few, few, like one or two fans who DM me, I appreciate you guys and ask me like what I'm looking forward to and stuff. Um, yeah. So here you go, guys. I talked about it. Kind of looking forward to it. Or I'm sorry, really looking forward to it. Kind of just want to just see it at this point. Don't really have like, is it going to be amazing? Is it going to be bad? Whatever it is, I accept it for what it is. I just want to see this man's uh, vision realized, you know. Um, kind of wrapping things up. I don't know how long this has been, but you know, I'm a little tired from talking all by myself. It's a, it's, it's, it's a lot harder than it looks. Um, this is another thing I was talking about with like Ash and Kristen, um, dude, doing this on your own and just like talking for a camera for this long. Oh man, it's exhausting. <laughs> it's actually exhausting as much fun as it is. It, it can be a little tiresome and hearing my own voice for this long is a little tiresome if I can be honest. So we will wrap it up, uh, very, very quickly here some upcoming content that I kind of wanted to share with you guys. I'm excited to, like I said, get this channel like up and running again. Um, the whole motivation to do chew on this, which I touched on briefly is just like wanting to connect with more people that are just like either small creators, like starting up their channel or like people that I admire in this in, in, um, in any facet, I would love to obviously have like athletes on the show in the future or anything like that. Who knows if that'll ever happen, but so far just, you know, within this YouTube space and more primarily in the film space at the moment, but that's something I want to branch out and do because this, like I said, the whole purpose I made the show is just to like spread good vibes and learn more about each other, learn more about what makes everybody unique. It's cool. I enjoy these conversations so much and um, kind of, you know, eventually tying it all back into film some one way or another, because it just naturally does. Um, but some upcoming content other than chew on this, I have some really, really cool ideas. Um, some video essays I want to do Donnie Darko has a limited edition uh, 4K Blu-ray that I pre-ordered coming out um, with the director's cut, which I've never seen and the theatrical cut. And I can't wait to do like an analysis video, a video essay on Donnie Darko because I freaking love that movie. It's so cool. Um, that kind of gives you a feel for what kind of movies I like too. That movie is like totally my vibe, totally up my alley. Um, obviously, I, I think I posted on Instagram a while back. I was going to do a retrospective series on Rush Hour, um, which is going to be so fun. That's obviously going to be a little bit more casual than like a Donnie Darko or what I'm going to talk about next, um, like more analysis type videos. This is just more me talking about like a film that I had such an affinity for or a film series that I had such an affinity for as a child and I still so deeply love. It's such a fun series and um, I'm mixed race myself. So it's cool seeing, you know, a black dude and a Chinese dude on screen. It's like, you know, both parts of me being represented. It's dope. It's cool. Um, 
I'm a little white too, but you know, <laughs> we see we see enough of our our white brothers out there. You know, gotta gotta get some diversity. And I appreciate I appreciate that film series for promoting that so hard. Um, Blu-ray pickups are something I want to do in the future too, because I have so many Blu-rays. So eventually, in the next couple months, um, once I like slow down on my Blu-ray buying for a little bit, I'll probably do like a Blu-ray collection video for the year. Um, but other than that, like after that, I kind of want to do like monthly or bi-monthly like pickup videos, just showing what I'm what I'm trying to watch, what I what I've watched already that I'm just like now buying a Blu-ray of and stuff like that. You know, those are fun videos as always. I used to I actually used to do those videos, and maybe I'll throw in a clip here, but those used to be fun. I used to really really enjoy those more than doing reactions and reviews um so yeah that's something i definitely want to go back to and the last two things upcoming are song to song a movie that i love so deeply i'm going to be doing an analysis of the characters of that film um oh excuse me i feel like that film um is such a strange anomaly i love it and it's even hard to pinpoint why sometimes when people ask me about it so i think it's time to just like fully dive in uh two weeks ago i saw the movie three times over a weekend to kind of like begin writing a script and that was insane so it's uh it's gonna be fun it's a big task i think that's kind of like the scariest and most daunting um video essay i plan on doing but that's definitely one that i'm excited to do and obviously i've been talking about the monthly recap videos for these past couple podcast episodes i just need to figure out a format i don't want to be you know too basic and i also don't want to be copying anybody because i know people do monthly recap videos that don't do like traditional movie reviews and that's kind of something that's easier for me like to do like i said just kind of talk about it as much as long as i want so maybe i'll even do it in like podcast form but some iteration of like monthly recaps of what i've been watching or that be movies or tv i definitely want to get into that too so in terms of upcoming content uh that's that's it that's it it's exciting um it's exciting being back i have a couple of guests in the next few weeks that's like oh man <laughs> i'm really really excited it's uh this is all happening super duper fast all of a sudden it feels like like it feels like me and you know a couple other creators like ash and kristen obviously um you know we're just so eager to like just restart this or, or for kristen for example just like start it up and you know bring cool content that like we've been wanting to make you know that we've been really passionate about trying to make for a long time now because like i said back then when i was uh, younger i mean i'll be honest you know everyone's just following the trend i did reaction videos and movie reviews because that's what you know the people that i admired were doing and that's what i liked but i didn't really have my own voice um so that's what this year is trying to do i'm just trying to find my own voice trying to just get a foothold on what i want this channel to be um, building this audience up, building this community up and kind of just getting to know you guys, you guys getting to know me um, and how we're going to make things work here. And it's going to be fun. I can't wait. I can't, I cannot wait for you guys to see the next episode of Chew on this, first of all, but also just, you know, everything coming out. And I want to hear all your feedback because I don't know how good or bad this is. I'll never know until you tell me. It's true. You know, I, I'm ready for the criticism, constructive or not. I know obviously the space is a very scary one. Um, but I encourage people, you know, don't give up. I think I'll end the episode with this, and this kind of feels like a moment out of nowhere. I'm not intending it to be, <laughs> but um, just don't get discouraged. Uh, this is something like I briefly touched, talked about in the episode with Sabrina Ramirez, but even with the small following I had, like, very, well, it's small following now. I appreciate you guys, but even smaller following um, a couple years ago, even then, people would go out of their way to be so nasty. Um, and so cruel sometimes and I was just a teenager you know and, and it sucked and I think that's part of the reason why it kind of discouraged me from from doing that as well um, or from doing this as well I mean and it's hard I'll be honest sometimes it's hard you know to just to just be like all right well screw what everyone says you know I'm just gonna do what makes me happy even if people are talking crap about it you know um, you just have to I think that's how you find, you know, at least for me, that's, that's what's fulfilling right now is just being, you know, doing what I've been wanting to do and just having fun doing it. And I think it shows, I think before in my content, it didn't show like my personality just didn't really show because I wasn't really having so much fun doing it other than chew on this. Um, and because of that, like, I don't think, I think people could tell, you know, that it wasn't completely genuine for it to, to an extent. And that's exactly what we want to avoid now. So I, I want to encourage everyone that's like thinking about starting a channel or, you know, restarting a channel, starting a show, podcast, filming a movie, writing a script, whatever you're trying to do, just do it. Just try it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But 
it's better to not know that it didn't work than to never know, you know, what could have been. So we'll end this episode with you on this, with that, uh, that philosophy. <laughs> didn't expect that to come out, but it did. Um, but anyway, fun. That was, that wasn't so bad. Huh? I, I barely had to drink water, which was nice. Uh, and uh, it was fun talking about, you know, an extremely, extremely wide range of topics. I didn't get to talk, you know, too much, too, too, too much detail about everything. But, you know, like I said, I just kind of wanted to give this solo episode to you on this test run, kind of just give you guys a brief understanding of who I am, things I enjoy, what to expect on this channel. I can't wait to continue this ride. And thank you for staying tuned for another episode of Chew on This. Like I said, the audio format of this should be out. Um, either before or after within minutes or, or a few hours of this episode being up, the audio will also be up on chew on this. You can find it on Spotify, um, which is so exciting to say. Uh, I'm probably going to do like build the link tree. So that way you can like just follow me from there. But for now, give all my socials a shout out Instagram at uh, Michael Chu underscore letterbox at just Michael Chu. Nice and plain and simple. Um, and Twitter at Michael Chu, the number four real. So Michael Chu for real on Twitter. And yeah, guys, those are my socials. And, you know, please connect with me. Hit me up if you want to be a guest on this show. I'll, I love talking to new people. Um, and obviously, it's hard to just, like, know everybody. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of cool voices that I, I, I'm dying to meet. I just don't know it yet. So please reach out if you if you want to come on and chat about something you're passionate about, whether that be movies, games, karate, collecting cups, collecting vases, whatever your passion is, dude. If, if you want to bring positive vibes and fun conversation to the show, hit me up guys, guys and gals. I would love to, I would love to chat with you. <laughs> um, so anyway, it's wrapping up this episode of Chew on this. It was a ride. Can't wait to see you guys on the next one. Same piece. Later.